is about fishing. Really? <laughs> it's called Earth's, Earth's Wildest Waters, and they've taken a handful of British people, and I'll tell you why I like it in a minute, who are fishermen and anglers, and two out of the seven of them are women, Ooh. from the UK, and all sorts of different fishing. So there's a Welshman who fishes from a coracle, if you know what that is. Yeah. Quite a lot of them are fly fishermen, you know, where you stand on the bank and, and toss it into the middle, and all sorts of different sorts of fishing. And they've taken them all around the world. We went to Iceland where one of the judges was a phenomenally beautiful female uh, fly fisher woman. Well, wow. I mean, I had, no idea, I had no idea that women were so big in fishing. And you think of it as just a sort of relentlessly blokey, quite dull, sad, tragic hobby, actually, don't you? But it's anything but. <laughs> Your business and your life with Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. In this podcast, we're going to cover everything you need to embrace to become a successful entrepreneur, marketing, money, and much, much more. How to create a business doing just what you love. How to own it, your business and your life. This one will be fast, funny, feisty, and very lively. So sit back and enjoy the show. Shut up, woman. <laughs> Morning, right. Judith. How are you today, then? I'm great, Nicola. How are you? Oh, you sound a bit coldy to me. Oh, no, not in the least. Oh, OK. Must have been a mishearing on my ears part. Yeah. So <laughs> what have you been up to this week, then? Uh, well, um, we'll start with the arty excitement first, shall we? Well, then. I've got a big box of new crayons. Oh, oh I'm so jealous. <laughs> oh, can I just tell you, I'm just going to open it on air, okay, okay, so I can describe to you. It's got two layers, like a chocolate box. Yeah. And the What's top that? is all yellow, all yellow and orange, pink and red, blue and purple. And the bottom layer is turquoise and green, funny sludgy colours going through sort of moody, I don't know, muddy type of orangey, right. yellow, right. All, all the spare ones. And then, fortunately, all the dull ones that I never use, black and grey, there's only about two of those, so that's lovely. So I've got gazillions of colours, which is exciting. And with gorgeous timing, one of my clients sent me a, a, a present that I wasn't expecting. Oh, she's gone away. She's gone away from the computer. She's gone away oh, yeah, from no, the computer. <laughs> no, I'm here. Hold on. I'm just trying to reach out for what my client sent me so I can describe it to you. It's a, bo it's a book of postcards that you colour in and send to people. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, all of cats. Sorry, I should oh. have said. So thus combining my two loves in life, cats and colouring. So I've sent the first one. I haven't. I've done the first one to send to the person who sent me the gift. So that's the colouring news. What a lovely the idea. Other, it is a lovely idea. The other news, which is a bit more pertinent, <laughs> is... Um, You'll remember my garden shed. I meant to look this up. Um, I meant to look this up where I spoke to you, but I think I applied planning permission for it. Yeah. In two, 2009, I think. So I either got it built in 2009 or 2010. Anyway, a long time ago. And an Australian publisher has written and asked me to be in their 2016 publication called She Sheds, which you probably know are all the rage. Well, I didn't. And, are, they, are they like man, sh man sheds, but for, for ladies? Well, she sheds, it's called. And uh, so they've asked me to be in it. They're paying me to be in it. Oh, God. And they're featuring my URL and they're sending me two free copies, which is lovely, of course. However, what is interesting about this story from an entrepreneurial creator perspective is 2016, I built mine in 2009. I mean, where have they been? Uh, that, and and what, what strikes me about that, and I tell my clients this all the time, and you and I have debated it here, which is it takes the world so long to catch on. 
Yeah, it does, doesn't it? And and the thing is, I remember it was actually. I think it was actually. I think you planned to build it in two thousand nine, but you actually got around to doing it in two thousand and ten, because I remember that was the the wilderness year, the first wilderness year, and you were very unsure about whether it was a good idea or not. But you. Oh were... no 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 no! False memory syndrome. Um, I built it because uh, very quickly. Uh, the planning permission was quick. The build was quick. And uh, I was flush when I did it, so yeah. there was no uncertainty at all. The uncertainty came afterwards, which is in 2004. Oh, yeah. <laughs> business was completely imploded with the credit crunch, and now I've got this office down at the bottom of the garden. But anyway, she sheds really not about offices particularly; they're about creative spaces for women, which I think is a nice idea. I love the fact that you're being paid to to be marketing. <laughs> Uh, I'm being paid. I did. My first question was, uh, would I have to pay to be in it? Because, you know, there's some very dodgy publishing models yeah, around. Exactly, yeah. And the answer was no, we'll pay you. I mean, a very small sum of money, which will has not turned my head. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, but my URL being in there is quite vital. Now, something occurred to me. What occurred to me in this topic? Uh, publishing, how long it takes them to catch on fees for being in it oh i can't think now but anyway the point i wanted to make was um you know look how long that is from from early adopter to mainstream absolutely absolutely i've got questions about your crayons by the way oh okay do you want to ask them now <laughs> well I want, I want to know i want to know what kind of packaging they came in what the, what is the make and are they yeah. um are they watercolor crayons or are they normal crayons? Well, we have to big up Alice here because Alice, you remember, sent me a handful of pinks, brought me a handful of pinks. Yes. Do you remember Alice Sheridan, the artist? And she introduced me. So I had these nice affordable ones from W. H. Smith, which I was using, and I knew no different. And then Alice, the artist, brought me these ones by Faber Castell, and they're named after Albrecht Dürer, who's an artist. And when you put them on the paper. They're just another level altogether because they, you know, there's no effort on behalf yeah. of the, I was going to say artist, but I've not forgetting myself yet. Yes, they are watercolour pencils and they come in a beautiful tin, um, which is, if I weren't a clutter clearer, is quite comfortable in its own right. You know, when you remember you were little and things came in boxes and tins. Oh, and you yeah, I still see, love boxes and tins. And tin. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's quite, it's reasonably heavy, but quite portable. I mean, you know, if I were to take it to St. Martin or something like that, it would be manageable because you get 60 choices, which is more than twice what I've had before. And in my other box, I'll try and take some photographs and share this later, because in my other box, all the colours are sharpened down to little nubbies, which are just so low I can't use them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, I've got length back as well. Length and choice is what I've got and length. quality. <laughs> well, as you know, I remember from art school, Jura were the pencils. But I mean, I'm, with 60 colours, you can just make any any number of combinations. And oh, my God. Oh, I, thinking, I mean, I've got I've got acid yellows. I've got pinks that even I didn't know existed. I've got a lovely, I mean, before I couldn't have done, for instance, uh, anything like a peacock because I just didn't have all those shades of blues and greens and turquoises yeah, yeah, and purples yeah. that peacocks have got. Oh, last night, peacock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Straight in. I, I, I think um, we ought to explain why we're getting so excited. It's because when you're an entrepreneur, you work so hard and so often and so much. It's important to have a hobby that you can get away from the computer to. And Judith has found one. And we're yes. all, we're all I, don't think, no, I mean, I'm so digital. I love digital everything. I, I don't think I've ever had a hobby before that wasn't that didn't involve the computer. No, but actually. also it's, it's a meditation for you, which is rather marvellous. It is a meditation. It does. As you know, I, I favour listening to the occasional audio book. I finished Liz, Liz Gilbert's Big Magic. And now I'm listening to Abundance by Peter Diamantes, which is not exactly what I wanted. Uh, but we'll come to that later. Ah, well, my week has been a bit of a slog because I've still got the cough, although it is getting better. But it has been a creative kind of orientated week, you'll be glad to hear, because I have started reading Big Magic. I know, don't die, Doc. Oh. I, yes. thought, I can't bear it. Everybody around me is reading it, including Dan Norris of Seven Day Startup. So I thought, well, if he's enjoying it, I'll, I'll, I must enjoy it. So I ordered it. So far, I'm enjoying the nice writing because she does um, write really well. She um, does. But that's as far as I've got. I, I, you know, I quite like the idea of um, ideas sloshing about waiting for a home. And I love the story of her and her, her hero meeting up and, you know, dis discovering they had the same idea. Oh, but, that's a lovely story. Yeah, yes. it's a very good story. But the other thing is um, Phoebe, Phoebe, who um, I'll just tell you, I've got I think I've got a new client on the way. And she spoke to me the other day and she said, I said, how did you hear of us? She said, oh, the podcast. She said, um, 
I should, I feel like I know everybody concerned. <laughs> it really does make me feel like I know all your family and everything. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, it is. It's just like the Acacia used to be with writing the blog. Um, but Phoebe did a test online because she was um, muttering about, you know, feeling that, you know, when she meets people and they say, what do you do? She's, she's, I mean, she's working in the pub. She's doing the social media. She's become a manager on Monday nights. So she's got nothing to be ashamed of here. But her boyfriend's just got a work placement at um, the Greyhound, uh, not the Greyhound Stadium, what we're talking about, the Brighton Football Stadium, you know, the Amex Stadium. In media, he's doing media studies or he's just finished doing it. Anyway, she feels that her thing isn't exciting enough to talk about. So she's starting to look at alternative careers. And she was looking at the thing. I don't know if you watched it on telly. Uh, Girls can code. I did. I, in fact, I I, I uh, tagged you and said, "Oh, well, Nicola, I think you'll like this." Yeah, and I did. I watched all three of them. Thanks, thanks mm. you for that. Well, she she mm. was vaguely aware of it, and she we took we went to the website, which is an extraordinarily good website, as the BBC tend to do, and it had a test on it, a personality test, to see what kind of a coder, uh, what kind of a digital person oh. could be, and it nice. was actually. Um, Oh, it's a very well-known test. The name has completely gone out of my head now. And, you know, it's a whole personality test. And they use it for everything. Oh, God, I can't yeah. remember. Myers-Briggs. Anyway, sorry? DISC. Myers, my, oh, DISC. That's right, yes. Yeah. And, and when I was looking at it, I was thinking, oh, that's awfully like um, the Wealth Dynamics test because she came out as a creator mechanic dynamo. And I thought, hang on a minute, dynamos, steel, you know, all that, that's that's Roger Hamilton, isn't it, so, as yeah, well? So yeah. They are all related, though. All the personality tests are all yeah. related way back to something like the I Ching, I think. Yeah. So she came out as a creative mechanic, which I thought was very interesting. And then this morning, as you may have realised, in fact, you have realised because you've listened to it. Right? I did. Nelson's, oh, Nelson's produced his first tune, spelt C H O O N. Yes, I saw that. Lovely. <laughs> two, two months into his music course, and he popped up on everything this morning, going, "Mum, I'm mum, mum, I've made my first tune. Promote it, yeah. promote it." Yes. So I thought, yes. oh, "Yeah, we've got a creative star on our hands." <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. worried about whether it's any good. Not worried about you know the stuff. Elizabeth Gilbert talks about, you know, yes. not having any problems getting it, it, the ideas out and wanting the world to hear them. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Star yeah. on our hands there. So, so I thought, all oh, that yeah. was quite interesting, the way it all fitted together. Yes, I do, I do think it fits together. And I tell you what, it fits in with my art as well. So I don't know why I'm calling it art, my crayoning, because actually it's about, we're all creative. 100% of us are creative. And, you know, what happens is in school, often if you're not careful, uh, different branches of your creativity get shut down. For instance, I was a good singer, so the teacher in music liked me, and I went up the music alleyway. I wasn't a particularly good in the art thing, and the teacher and I didn't have a rapport, so that was shut down when I was about 12, and here it is opening up again when I'm 60. Now, what you want to do is not you know, not take any notice. I mean, the number of people I know who have been scarred for life and not allowed to sing and they don't sing and they don't participate in music because some teacher told them in a lineup, you know, yes, no, yes, no, you can be in the choir. Don't start me on this one. It makes me so cross. Our job, your job, and well done to you for these two examples, is to open up the children and encourage their creativity and participation in everything. And I don't know if you saw it, that wonderful video put out by Jeremy Vine, who is the weakest link on the dancing. He, I must show it to you because it's deeply moving. I'm getting goosebumps. He's, you know, people have said, you drop out, you leave, you're no good. He said, I am doing this for my daughters. And just because you can't win something doesn't mean you shouldn't keep trying. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to see that. I'll show it to you. It's very, very moving. Got, got millions and millions and millions of shares. And, you know, thinking back, I, I was always, you know, taught, told that the creativity was only good if you were going to art college. Well, actually, you know, your average builder doing up an old property is being creative, right. aren't they? You know, right. yes. estate agents, I know this is a yeah. weird example, but estate agents putting deals together. Yeah. If you put, bring something into the world that wasn't there before, you're creative. We're all creative. It, it wasn't until after I'd sold my accountancy business, so 20 years, it's like, oh, I've created something, I've employed people, I've worked with 250 clients, I've sold it on to somebody else who's still trading it 20 years later. I'm creative! But I was the only person who ever told me that. And once I realised it, it was like lighting the blue touch paper. And now we're back to our favourite topic, which is creating fin finances and jobs and, and, and uh, businesses out of thin air. That's our favourite yeah. topic ever, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So what 
what's fueled your fire on that one this week, then? Well, a little variation on last week. I had um, today's the fourth of November, and my I had a price promotion um, for clients up until Halloween, uh, and so I got a handful of new clients. A, a gratifying number of returners renewals and upgrades all saying nice things about I've been with you for a year and I want more of it which was really nice and you know that as I said last week it's always clients that fill my fire but it's always nice to know that they appreciate my bit too one of my clients often sends me an email after a session which I don't know whether she realized it until I pointed it out to her and it's certainly not a requirement but it was very affirming of me and it's sometimes nice to have a client say I appreciate you for x y and z yeah, very nice. I um, I wrote you. Well, as I say, it's been a bit of a slog this week. This cough. I mean, I I'm so glad that other people are starting to get it now. Because you know, I know it sounds really mean. I don't think uh, you're, you're referring to it as if I knew about it. I don't think I knew you had a cough. I've had the most f- horrendous cough for about five weeks to the point, oh. and it didn't turn into a cold. I had a couple of sneezes at the beginning, and then it it didn't feel like a chest infection. It didn't, you know, because I was able to breathe, but it was just the most weird thing I honestly thought there was something seriously wrong with my throat or esophagus at some point and I was quite worried about it but obviously not going to the doctors as you do yes. <laughs> mainly, mainly because I didn't want anyone putting anything down there and um and that I've just started noticing that other people are complaining of coughs now everyone's you know they're, they're people are talking about it on the bus they're talking about it on Facebook groups I had an interview with um a summit organizer yesterday and she could or we had to, you know it took took an hour and a half to do the interview because she, we both had to stop to cough regularly and it's yeah. quite a convulsive anyway it's really been dragging my energy down so I've been um, and it's been quite, uh, you know, as you're hearing the project up a bit, it's been quite a busy week this week. Um, so I've been trying to keep myself going with uh, just thinking, what can I do to inspire myself and get me past this fact that it all feels like a bit of a slog? And so I've just been visiting, you know, I'm, I belong to a limited number of forums and I've just been visiting the forums to see what everyone else is up to. But reading the messages in the forums, it became very clear that people are, you know, and I, I, I suspect you see this a lot, Judith. People sort of divide into three areas, really, and and the lucky ones go straight to the – imagine a a pyramid with three lines horizontally. At the bottom, you've got the clueless and asleep people who, you know, bless them, they haven't woken up to the fact there's another way yet, that they, you know, they could have a a, a business on the side of their job, they could invest in property, they could do all sorts of things to improve their financial lot, but they haven't really woken up to that yet. They're perhaps not even feeling the pain. And then you've got the people in the middle, and this is quite a big amount of people. And this is either with, you know, people who want to get into internet marketing or people who want to start their own little business like you see. And they're the people who really want to do it and for whom it should be simple. And and reading Elizabeth Gilbert as well made me sort of, you know, realise this. But their emotions are just 100% getting in the way. And it's, you know, they every single emotion from fear of being criticised, all the stuff that Elizabeth Gilbert talks about, yes. f- yeah. t- through to, oh, you know, I'm going to fail, what happens if it goes wrong, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then you've got the people who, there are some who are born to this sort of clarity, and we've all known examples of these people, like, you know, the lovely Irene Niddle, who listens from yes. Sunderland. Yes. She she was yeah. seems to have been born with this kind of clarity and, and emotional I'm sure she does feel emotions about her business, but she doesn't seem to doesn't seem to verbalise them very often, doesn't seem to be affected by them very often. James Shrampko is another one. You know, there seem to be people who just think clearly and who don't seem to let emotion get in the way of them becoming a success. I think they have emotions. They just crack on anyway. It's feel the fear and do it anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Well, do, yeah, but do they even feel the fear? They don't. Some, yeah, I think they, I think they, yes, you, to say they don't have emotions like the rest of us is to do them a disservice. No, no I'm that. not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. Totally not saying they don't have emotions. What I'm saying is that they don't seem to have that emotion fueled fog of, of unclarity. Ah, about their yes, 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 yes. That's a good point. Yeah. So well, they, they don't let emotions cloud their thinking. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Or their actions, in fact. Or incapacitate them. Yeah. I mean, you're right. As I've said to you a couple of times in in these podcasts, that 10 years ago I was teaching people how to run a business. And now I'm a psychologist. Yes. (laughs) Because I'm trying to get them over, under, round and to bust all of those emotions. And actually, I think that's why quite a lot of my clients have loved that Big Magic book, is because she addresses those very people. Yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Whereas, Whereas... And I think that's why I re- resonated with Dan's book, Seven Day Startup, because 
he did talk about the emotions, not to a great degree, but to some degree. So I was a I was aware that he he had felt doubt, he had felt fear, he was getting frustrated, he did think there was something wrong with him. You know, all the things that I, I felt in the past. So I, I think that's why that book spoke to me so much. And I think that's why Big Magic is speaking to lots of your clients so much, mm. but perhaps not mm. to the mind so much. But then but then, you know, so it just really and and really that the hierarchy of needs thing in business is is to go from clueless and asleep through through confused and emotion emotional to clarity where you just know that you know if you take x number of steps in a certain kind of way you will have a business and if you do a certain number of things on a you know a consistent basis it, that business will become more successful and don't feel all the emotion around it I think that actually people in all three of those camps um, can do something with what they have from where they are. So I don't think a lot of us will necessarily always be or even ever be in that top camp. I think it's possible to a, a degree, you know, to to employ yourself and achieve a, a degree of, of financial independence in the middle group. And I wouldn't mind having a crack at the bottom group either, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Because I've seen a lot of, you know, the whole wealth creation thing went away with the property crash, but I've yeah. definitely seen signs of it coming back again. Um, people are starting to host events that would speak to that market again mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. teach the basics. I do see, I do see people in the bottom group. There, there's something that you missed out of their um, psychological breakdown, which is their mistrustful and they think they've been lied to and they think everything's a scam and a con oh god i was so cynical judith when i first got involved in all this stuff so mm. cynical mm. so cynical mm. i bought cheap shampoo because i didn't believe nice makeup and shampoo made any difference yeah so cynical clueless and asleep yes. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's fearful cynical clueless and asleep oh i'm writing all that down because I, I feel a blog post coming on <laughs> Oh, good. Hang on, I'll have to write that down because I will forget it otherwise. Because all right, it's fearful, cynical, clueless, and asleep. Okay, and and I don't mean that to be derogatory in any way because I was there. And and how are you supposed to be any different? How are you supposed to be not? Oh, no, no, quite absolutely, absolutely. When all the goes that you've had have come to naught. Yes, yeah. I remember the thing I wanted to tell you in section one. We have a new podcast listener, one of my clients, Kath, and it. I think quite a lot of people yet don't understand what a podcast is. Cass thought she would have to pay. Really? Yeah. Good God. Yeah. So not, not, not only have we discovered that there are people who don't like iTunes, and there seem to be quite a lot of them. I don't know why people don't like iTunes. I don't have any issues with iTunes at all. But So we need to address. We're losing listeners because people don't know what a po podcast is or how to subscribe to it or sign up to it, and they're fearful they might have to pay. Well, we send, I tend not to send people, and this, this is derogatory to our, our iTunes charts, actually. I tend not to pe send people straight to the iTunes feed. I, te I tend to send them to the website yeah. where they can choose to listen yes. or um, yes. subscribe yes. to iTunes. So yes. I think that's yes. got to be the way forward. I think it, yeah. it, perhaps we should we could do a few free. social media. Yeah, we could do with a few social media, you know, blasts to the effect that a podcast is free and you don't have to like iTunes to subscribe to it. Well, I can just ask um, my because because we use meet at meet at meetedgar.com to fire out oh. old episodes on a regular basis. I'll just ask Inga to go through and put in the word free before the word podcast. Yes, perfect. And see if that works. Yeah, but we and are even we some are that go don't don't like iTunes. No, no worries. Listen at our website. Yeah, but we are growing our re our listenership steadily and surely now. So um, that's rather exciting. So. Yeah. And oh. Kath said something really nice, which was rather similar to what your client said. Um, she said, oh, I feel I know you so much better now. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good. Yeah, it is. But first, a word from our sponsors. Do you feel isolated and alone in running your own home based business? Do you have worries, doubts, fears and resistance, which sometimes make you feel like giving up? Don't worry. You're not alone. In fact, you're perfectly normal. It can be scary all by yourself. But what if you could learn how to become a confident business owner, how to trust yourself more and grow your income, relax and be more creative and productive? Small Business Big Magic is a unique business mentoring group providing grounded practical support and advice, fast responses to your questions, 
inspiration and solutions to boost your clarity and help you find direction, focus and success in your life and business. Join Small Business Big Magic today for the friendship and encouragement of others just like you and the enthusiasm of a coach who gets you and your business. There's big magic for your small business at judithmorgan.com. So what's our client challenge of the week then? Well, I've renamed it this week. It's called Client Opportunity of the Week. Oh, okay. And just for <clears throat> future ref, after the show, I do have a challenge of my own that I'll tell you about and perhaps we could revisit uh, visit it on one of the shows. Oh, well, that would be nice. I would like that for next week. Okay. Tell us about your Client Opportunity. Uh, so Client Opportunity of the Week. Um, writing a book for the sake of your business. Yes. Is an opportunity. It is. It's not a requirement. Um, so why do it? Well, let's start with why do it, and then we'll go on to how to do it. Oh, it's funny. We were already talking about this yesterday on this um, tel- summit thing that, that I was on. Um, why do it? Well, it gives you immense authority. Um, you suddenly become more serious in everybody else's eyes, especially the kind of people who, who are likely to give you money. Um, because <laughs> no, because people still perceive that it's a massive undertaking to publish a book. Even if it's an ebook, you know, they just, yeah. the minute you've got something you can call a book, it's brilliant. If it's a yeah. physical book or one that you can order or at will, so for example, if you're going to do a speaking <coughs> gig and you order 10 to take with you, then it's it's brilliant. Just something about holding a physical book in your hand at a speaking gig or a networking event or whatever, it just gives you so much more authority because 99% of people will, will never do it in a million years. Mm. So that's that's the first thing. The second thing is that it's a brilliant <coughs> marketing tool. I mean, you know, to, to give away an ebook, or to even better, to give away an ebook and then off, immediately offer the audio version, um, is is fantastic. You can sell audio books for a lot more than, you know, ten quid, fifteen quid, whatever. The other thing you can do is you can give away the ebook version and then offer people the chance to buy the paperback version and or the audio version. So you've already got three products right there just from doing it. Um, endless opportunities to create then worksheets and turn it into a program. I was talking to a client about this the other day. If you've got an ebook, just read it out loud. You've got an audio. And if you put worksheets with it and there are people out there who specialize in taking people's books and creating worksheets from them, you've got a program. So it's a brilliant uh, way of, of packaging up your knowledge and then extending it in different kinds of products. And what do you use to record it? Um, I, just anything on your computer, really. I mean, uh, if you've got, you know, if you go to, if you're on a PC, if you just go to your start menu and then look for your yellow accessories folder, and then within that there is a thing called sound recorder. Okay. And if you're on a Mac, you've got all sorts of choices on what to record it with. Or if you just want to speak it into your telephone in a quiet room, that would be acceptable too. Use something like. And then you've got quite a big file, haven't you? So how do you turn that in? Oh, you do it in chapters, Judith. Ah, okay. So if you've got, yeah, and believe me, a chapter is long enough. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And then you need to edit you... It. You need something to edit it. So you can do that with um, with iMovie, with um, Windows Movie Maker. You know, don't don't think that just because it's audio you can't edit it. You can still edit it on all the movie um, editing things. Or you, or you might get somebody to edit it for you, mightn't you? Oh, you would you would love to get someone to edit it for you. It's the most Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't relish editing my own audio, I have to say. No, I mean, I quite like the sound of my own voice, and you do, actually. So <laughs> I do like the sound of my own voice, but I wouldn't want to edit it. No. You know, that's a, that's the thing a is, you, you, you lose concentration so easily, <laughs> and, and you miss things like the odd throat clearing or the birds dog barking or the plane going over or whatever. Yeah. And often yeah. misread, you often misread bits of your um, your own writing and then you have to stop and stop, read that bit again because your brain yeah. goes into sleep mode when you're reading your own stuff. But it is a it is a truly, I'll tell you something, if you did the first draft of your book and then you tried to turn it into an audio, it's a brilliant way of finding out which bits of your book don't flow very well. Whether it reads, yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, I tell you, I think this idea came out of listening to the second half of Liz Gilbert's book because... I don't know how it reads, but it listens as if it's in very short chunks. Is it written in very short chunks? I don't know. Uh, I haven't really got that. Well, I suppose I'm a third into it. I haven't really noticed. Yeah, yeah. OK, because listening to it, it is, it's almost like a series of blog posts. Well, again, that is a way to create a book. I mean, you, know, I'd, yeah. I'd, you could gather a bunch of your best blog posts together and put them, put them into a book. If You know, I did that with, um, I think I did that with, 
the uh, Business Success Factory book, which I've got to say, I'm still deeply dissatisfied with. Do you remember I was so disappointed how short it was? And and I'm, I was thinking after reading bits of Elizabeth Gill, but I'd really love to go back to that book because I don't feel, feel it's a good enough reflection of what I got to share in those topics. But um, now, let, let me ask you, because you've done two books in three, the first three. one. Three. Yeah. In the first one, I know you did it with Joe Gregory. Did you do the second? And I don't know what the third one is. Did you do them the other ones yourself, or how did you do the other ones? Uh, I did the first one with uh, it was with De- Debbie as well in those days uh, with Lean Market yeah. Press, and it was you know yeah. they, I, I I don't know who edited it, but um, it, it took forever. I, that one was a collection of a, a, a series of emails. Do you remember 101 well I do. And, but, I do. I, but I'd structured them around 10 topics and I had, you know, certain – this is a way to write a book, right, a, a non-fiction book, is to decide what you want to cover, what your topics are, go through and put the three key things you want to share with everybody about those uh, each of those topics, have a recommended reading book and a recommended online resource, and then you're halfway to doing that book. And then if you then go and work out – if you mind map it, if you're visual, or do whatever, the list if you want to, or bullet points – And then go and look at each of the three things you want to share with people about that topic and then think, what are the three key things on that bit that I need to cover? And you've pretty much written your book by then. It's just a question of writing it as if you're talking to someone. And that is also a good way to write a book is to dictate it into um, your phone, for example, but have a structure and then talk it talk through the structure and then send it off to rev.com and it will come back as a transcription and then you can either send it off for editing or do it yourself. And what do you think the pros and cons are of self-publishing versus looking for a proper publisher? Is there a book, a type of book that you think needs to go one route or the other? I think all books should be self-published to start with. Um, the reason I went with the set with um, lean marketing for the second one was because I had a contractual obligation. But what with um, the editor and coming back and forth with me, and every time they asked me to edit a bit, I ended up adding stuff back in because I couldn't remember that I'd said it before or after. You know, <laughs> It was such a disjointed process, and it's no reflection on them at all. It's more a reflection on me. So I would always self-publish first. Um, there is a really good course that you can get that walks you through – it doesn't, it doesn't walk you through how to, how to write a book in the first place. It, it assumes you've got a book, but it's how to self-publish professionally, how to get it on Amazon, how to get it on Kindle, how to how to actually get hard copies in your hand for the for the least amount of money. How you know it's it's absolutely brilliant, and um, I can't remember the name of it, of course, but it's oh, hang on, worldwide self-publishing, and I will give you the link, Judith. She's brilliant okay. at it. Okay. One more point I wanted to make about this. Um, The friends and clients and colleagues I know who have been published by an orthodox publisher, the best results that I see they've got is a massive list build. You should definitely have something in your book that brings people to your website to get a present or a gift or a resource that they wouldn't get anywhere else, because that really does help. um, bring. You've got if you do go with a traditional publisher, even if they give you if you if they give you a right. If you go with a traditional publisher, you're going to earn something like 12p a book sold. It's not a money making exercise. You're lucky if it's a list building exercise and you're even luckier if the publisher puts any marketing welly behind it at all. They won't. Basically, they're throwing mud at a wall to see what sticks. They're putting books out there just to see if one becomes a, a, a hit through word of mouth like Elizabeth Gilbert did. You've got to be ready to take on all your own marketing, even if you're going with a traditional publisher. So why wouldn't you why wouldn't you self publish and keep five, six pounds per book sold rather than 12 P per book sold? It just doesn't make sense, especially as you're going to have to do all the the marketing. Well, that's why I think you have to work out why you're doing it. You know, if you're doing it for money, I would always self publish if you're doing it for reach. I and you've got a decent publisher you can work with. I could cite examples of this, but I, I do have friends and colleagues and clients who've achieved a massive reach from orthodox publishing that they wouldn't have done from self-publishing. You're going to need a book. <laughs> if you are not going to get a publishing deal without without a book agent, so that's the first thing you need to be looking at. You need to find a book agent who believes in your book, and they will move mountains and make the whole process so much easier. Um, you there are uh, there are books of book agents and there are books of publishers in the same way there are directories of all sorts of things and I can't remember off the top of my head what, what it's called whether it's the white I think book. it's called the writers and artists yearbook isn't it that's that what it, you're thinking yeah, of 
Yeah, that. Well, you're looking for a book agent, and and the other thing to do is think of books that are. I know all artists don't well, want to believe that their creations are anything like anyone else's, but uh, in the same way in the music industry, I would say to Nelson, for example, okay, let's look and find an artist who's doing the same kind of feel of music that you're doing. Um, and then find their manager, because that will give you a short list of managers who specialise in this kind of music, who know the contacts at the record labels. Exactly the same in the book world. I would say think about all the people who've written books that have done well. That's the key thing. Written books that have done well, um, as, that are similar kind of content to yours and that would appeal to a similar kind of audience. And then, you know, either Google them or go and have a look in the book because all the credits are, are often in the, in the book. Um, and find out who the agent is and then start approaching the agents yeah so Judith you've you've got books yeah nothing I'm proud of um oh. <clears throat> they're, they're they're well out of date and just like not being inclined to do my own editing on a piece of audio I can't be bothered to revisit them and update them yeah okay so what you need to do is you need to outsource that don't you do you think I don't think it needs doing. I don't think it needs I don't think it needs doing. I think okay. that, you know, they're they're of their time and they're in my past. Yeah, but they're still there sitting there giving you credibility, aren't they? Uh, I don't know that it gives me any credibility at all, actually, because I don't promote it because I'm not proud of it because it's out of date. And Amazon sent me a cheque for nine pounds a year, I think. <laughs> I've just finally got off my five official copies to the British Library. When you pr- when Ooh. you when you publish a book, you have to send one copy to the legal depository of the British Library, and then you have to send five copies, physical copies, to somewhere else. And it's one of those jobs. I'm not very good at posting things, and it's one of those jobs that sat there for about two years. And I finally got it into the packet, got the label written, and it's sitting in the back of the car now, waiting to go to the post office. <laughs> one step closer. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is definitely worth it. I love I love the fact that you know I have physical books somehow because I've read so much. I think as a child, it's it's important to me. And I tell you what, we haven't talked about at all in this section, and I'm glad we haven't. Is we haven't talked. You, you haven't mentioned at all. Neither have I on purpose. Being a writer, because actually what I wanted to talk about here was the benefit to your business of writing a book, any book, whether or not you're a writer. I, I don't think I think we're all writers, aren't we? We, well, there we go again. That's that's our theme of the week, isn't it? We're yeah. all empowered to do whatever the hell we like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I've just given everyone a structure, a structure to write a self-help book. So yeah, you know, why not do it? Well, that, that's your structure for everything, which I rather like. It's like yeah. a spider. I was, I still do it with no, everybody. No, 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 no. Draw, no. draw a big circle. Draw a big circle, and and it's got ten legs. And uh, the first leg, spiders don't have ten legs. Of course, they have eight or six, eight. Anyway, whatever. They don't have ten. And the first one is always the close uh, opening and the end, the last one's always the closing. And you've got eight chapters in the middle. And actually, Ryan Dice teaches people the same model, that each chapter should have 10 chapters of two and a half thousand words. And each chapter of two and a half thousand words should have 10 chunks of 250. Easy. He says you can write a book in a weekend. I think my next book is going to be my auto- autobiography because I've already remember. Written, I've already written my yeah. in the form of email. But I've only got yeah. M- memoir, darling. Memoir. We call it memoir. And actually, they're my favourite type of books. It'll be an inspirational memoir from, you know, Lovely. someone went from zero to hero to zero to hero again. Lovely. Although she does say, Liz, in the book, don't try to write a book that don't set out to write a book that t- tries to be inspirational because you can't you can't second guess what that is. Only the audience can decide. Well, I think anyone who keeps going despite the odds and overcomes eventually to do some sort of okayness. That's got to be an inspirational book, isn't it? I read loads of those. What she, what she's saying, well, I read those too. But what she's saying is, you can't intend that as the writer. Oh, I see. Yes. Well, she's quite sensible. I might, I might plough on with this one. She is quite sensible. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's ch- client challenge of the week. What's the word? It is. Well, mine's come out of big magic, funnily enough, curiosity. Towards the end, she writes about being curious and, um, you know, being curious in, in following your um, creativity um, uh, so that it comes to something in fruition. And obviously, curiosity is where one is as a coach, which is all about asking questions about the client. So that's my word of the week. What's yours? Well, I like that because I'm very curious. Some might say yeah. Some might say nosy, nosy, <laughs> but curiosity for life and 
you know, let's see how, let's have a go and see how it turns out. And I wonder what's around this corner. And I wonder what would happen if we did that. Yeah. And asking questions is, is, uh, is a form of creativity. If it's about one's own projects and, and other ones, is let's just see where this might lead. In fact, she says that quite often, which I love. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you think everything's done and you, you know, lie there in bed one night and think, oh, I wonder if I did, if I changed that headline, what would happen? <laughs> So yeah, that's, that's your that's your own special weirdness, I think, Nicola. <laughs> Lying in bed and thinking about headlines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's tragic, isn't it? My word of the week is work because it feels it's felt like work this week. It doesn't mm. often feel like work, so I love it. But I have yeah. had three new clients all come on at once, and um, one of, one of their campaign is not going as well as I. Two of them are going brilliantly. One of them, the big one, of course, is not going as well as it could, and I don't understand why. Which means hanging on the phone to help at Facebook and talking to some idiot who no no offense but people at Facebook but someone who has been who admitted yesterday to me that they haven't actually been trained in the new pixel yet so I think that's pretty bad but um, anyway work it's all felt like work I've I think I'm not very well and I haven't got much energy yeah. um, but what that's me- meant to me is that I have to now think about um, systemizing and you know uh getting it you know getting it systemized so that other people can come on and do the bits that I can't do especially in view if I'm not well yeah so that's uh work leading into systems again I think a, a cough will always you know illness will always make it feel like work won't it I'm just so you know I'm just so healthy normally and and I just yeah. just lays you low of it sometimes doesn't it well I think being healthy and being able to rely on being healthy is very helpful to being self-employed actually yeah it is so more systems are are coming in my direction. <laughs> What's your project updates then? Um, very quiet still, um, in a good way. I think my I'm I'm still leading up to this launch next week, which is um, my lotto one. We have to commit by the fifth, which is tomorrow, which I've done, and the first draw will be before I speak to you next. And what happens in this is we, if we've invited three people and they've paid, we play the lotto for free. And we play in social circles, so it makes full use of, of social media. And if you're in my social circle and you win big, I win part of it. And I win a percentage of the winnings of everybody I bring in. It's pegged to the Euro millions. Uh, and the, the out- outcome is described as win come. So it's income that you win. I'm really excited about this. Can't wait for it to start. I've shared it with quite a lot of people. And it's really interesting. Yesterday was an experience where somebody said to me, oh, God, Judith, this is so exciting. Why didn't you tell me about this before? I did tell you about it before. You just didn't, weren't in the right frame of mind or didn't notice. It's interesting how we don't always catch on to everything instantly that there has to the time has to be right do you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah what do you yeah. think what, think of that six months it took me before i read rich dad poor dad where you know yeah. people were telling me to and i just didn't <laughs> yeah 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 what about yours what are you up to um well i've been moving um well i haven't actually my social media manager has been moving and up, updating my evergreen posts from the business success factory to clicks and leads the ones that are appropriate to a business environment and, yeah. then, and then moving the ones that aren't appropriate, that are more sort of soul searchery, you know, um, entrepreneurially to clicks, leads and sales. But the other thing I've been doing is is because I've made a note, I've, I write a diary, as you know, a journal nearly every day. Um, but I've also uh, because I've got good accounts, I've, I've actually got a note of all my income for every month since I started clicks, leads, clicks and leads. Um, so I've been writing monthly updates, both on terms of what I'm doing to market it that month, what the income is on recurring monthly recurring revenue, it's called, um, not the incidental income. And it's just made me realise I'm only up to July, but it's made me realise that um, I'm actually nearly a year into this. Good God. You know, I don't think I've done anything for a year for a while. <laughs> Well, I don't think we often give ourselves enough credence. Actually. I frequently have to say to clients, stop, 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 listen to what you're saying. A year ago, you couldn't have said that. You know, we, we're not very good at looking back and seeing where we've been, are we, sometimes? No, we're not. So um, so I'm quite enjoying that. But uh, in terms of how well Cal's going, it's been a, a bump a week, a bump a couple of weeks, actually, for inquiries and, and sales calls and... Um, you know, and, and just getting a project set up. And, you know, I'm just feeling much more 
well, I'm just feeling so in control and confident and like it's going to work. And that is such a great feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. It really yeah, is. So it's all good. It's all good on, on my end. Who or what's impressed then? Well, do you want to go first? Uh, okay. Um, in my perambulations around the forums to find inspiration and um, and all that stuff, I've come across a chap called John Logar. Now, it's interesting because he came to my attention first when I watched his presentation at Superfast Business last year, James Shrepko's live event. And then um, I came across him again when I was um, wandering around the foundation materials, promotional materials. And um, he's an Australian guy. And he specializes in helping business consultants to build million dollar business consulting businesses. Um, something that you'd think was quite hard, actually, because, you know, consulting is, is exchanging time for money. But he is one of these people who thinks really clearly and doesn't seem to, you know, I'm not saying he doesn't have emotions. Sorry, John, if you're listening. I'm saying that he seems to have clarity and be emotion free around his business. Um, whether that's you know true or not, I don't know. But that's how he comes across. He comes across as very clear and very sensible and very unemotional about building a business. And he's, um, I've been really enjoying um, listening to his videos. And there was, in one of them that I can recommend for everyone is easy. If you go to YouTube and just put in John Logar, L O G A R, he's got a video called the Easy Four Step Marketing Campaign for Consultants. And it really is just a, a short video that tells you how you can send out four emails and he tells you what to put in the emails and what to say. And um, I just love things like that, you know, clear, clear tactics, I suppose they are, that, that anyone can follow. Um, and he's also got a site called MakeEverydayAPayday.com, which I love the title of. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice name. Very nice name. Absolutely. So so he's one of the emotion, emotionless, emotion free not emotionless, emotion free about his business people that I would. Like. Oh, now that's a very nice distinction. It's not that they don't have emotions. What did you say it again? Emotion, not emotion. He's emotion. Yes, free about that's it. Emotion free, not emotionless. Yeah. yeah. Emotion free about his business, particularly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm aspiring to be instead of a mess, a swirling mess of emotions <laughs> and fog. Well, no, 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 darling, you used to be. I don't think you are. I don't think you are uh, prey to your emotions in the same way anymore. And I think it was that weekend in wherever, in wherever you went with yeah, what's his name. Yeah, it was. It helped enormously. But, yeah, I think it's just progression, isn't it, as you just keep going. you. you yes, know. yes, exactly, yes. Actually, it's not giving up on the personal development stuff. Very true. I keep doing a lot of that. <laughs> it does work. Uh, which, is, which harks back to the people who were asleep and fearful and everything's a scam. There's no point in doing personal development. It's a bit cheesy. Actually, there's a living, breathing example for you. Well, all of the really successful people I know work all the time on their personal development. Yeah. You know, whether it's meditating or, read, or, or Dan Norris reading Big Magic. You know, they're all yeah. at it yeah. all the time, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. And there's a curiosity, isn't there? So there's an assumption in Dan that that, that that I'm reading a book that might not seem typical of a choice for me, but there might be something in it for me. Well, just to contrast, and, and you know, I, I've, I've given up on mentioning Steli because you always used to shout at me. But I can mention Dan all I like for the time being. Um, he's He and his business partners have, you know, Dan, he, he started WPCurve.com, but they've also got a brewing. His passion is brewing craft beer. And a year ago, they decided they were going to start home brewing. And a year later, they've actually just started their own brewery. And even more impressive than that, they their beer, um, Black Hops, I think it's called. Is no, no, it's called Black Ops, which is Black it's, it's, a, it's a play on words for, for male computer games. Well, funny you should say that, because they are the first virtual beer to be adopted by Call yeah. of Duty. Yeah, I mean, so on one hand, he's, he's doing all the promotion for a, a top end computer game for his brewing company and the other hand he's, yeah. he's reading big magic in between yes well and then you see i love that i absolutely love that um higgledy piggledy judgment free open-minded open-mindedness this yeah. is i surprise myself by constantly and actually what's impressed me this week is a good example of it i surprise myself constantly by how if you just open that box and see what's in it, it's like oh i never thought i'd be interested in that but oh look you know i think that's gorgeous yeah uh, so tell us what's impressed you then 
Yeah, well, um, my favourite TV viewing is what we call the journey shows. Um, and I like it because it's about people's performance improving. And that's my work. And the one I'm watching now, I mean, God, here's a good example, is about fishing. Oh, really? <laughs> it's called Earth's, Earth's Wildest Waters. And they've taken a handful of British people. And I'll tell you why I like it in a minute who are fishermen and anglers, and two out of the seven of them are women, Ooh. from the UK, and all sorts of different fishing. So there's a Welshman who fishes from a coracle, if you know what that is. Yeah. Quite a lot of them are fly fishermen, you know, where you stand on the bank and, and toss it into the middle, and all sorts of different sorts of fishing. And a bloke who was born abroad who can just, you know, dangle a, a hook off a, off a stick type of things. And they've taken them all around the world. We went to Iceland where one of the judges was a phenomenally beautiful female uh, fly fisher woman. Well, wow. I mean, I had, no idea, I had no idea that women were so big in fishing. And you think of it as just a sort of relentlessly blokey, quite dull, sad, tragic hobby, actually, don't you? But it's anything but. It's exciting. They've been to Iceland, Costa Rica, Laos. They haven't finished yet. It's a typical journey show. Somebody's voted out each week. One of the women has gone. What was really interesting is that the men, uh, the, the respect that all the men showed for the women participants. So they weren't hangers on and afterthoughts and women have only got into fishing, you know, last night. There's no gender issues in it at all. There's no sexism in it. And one of the women, Jo, who's a young slip of a thing, is powering on towards winning the thing. I don't think she'll win, but she might be second. She might win. She's just fantastic. But who would have thought I would ever have watched a programme about fishing? <laughs> I'm speechless and find it and find it fascinating because of course for me <clears throat> Bake Off's not about cake Strictly's not about dancing this program's not about fishing it's all about for me the improvement and the journey and actually it's about people being prepared to have a go in the full glare of the spotlight with all of us watching being brave for the rest of us having adventures some of these people for instance you know, they've always wanted to go to Costa Rica because it's a fascinating place. It's lush in the extreme. Literally, it means rich coast, Costa Rica. You know, the, the seas are teeming with fish. The jungle's teeming with wildlife. And, and they can catch big game fish that they'd never dared hope that they could catch because they're fishing their local river where they live. But just... Just going through exciting experiences with us all watching. You know, you might be voted off. You might fail. And not just might you fail. And this harks back to what we were discussing earlier. But the telly's watching. Can you think of anything worse? I can't. But no. I'm so it's just so gorgeous to watch people growing because they're prepared to try. That is so poignant because obviously there is someone in my family who I wish would try something mm. public like that. And I who I think has got the talent, but they don't. So they won't, which is, you know, there you go. Well, they might one day. You never I've know. Never Walking <clears throat> back to another episode of ours, I've let it go. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, I just wanted to warn you that it started last night, new journey show, haven't seen it yet. Pottery, I'm on to next. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Uh, it'll be the same thing for me. It's like, which one do you like best? Who's having a go? Who's experimenting? Who's caught the judges on? <laughs> Who's struggling and resisting being successful? Who's happy to be a winner? All of that. Love it. It's a very messy hobby. I did it at school, so don't think of taking that one up. Unless you I have certainly have no inclination of taking up. Mind you, I haven't watched the programme yet, so I never say never, Nicola. Never say never indeed. Keep our minds open. That's the, the theme of the show this week. Thank you very much, Judith. It's been a pleasure, okay. as always. Speak to you soon. Right, see you next week. Bye. 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 You've been listening to Nicola Cairncross and Judith Morgan. The podcast is called Own It, Your Business and Your Life. Do come and visit us at ownitthepodcast.com. We'd love to hear your feedback. You can find out more about Judith and visit her on her website at judithmorgan.com and you can find Nicola at nicolacairncross.com.